Hello fellow ATDXers and welcome to another video and today we're going to look at how to use ZX paintbrush to create sprites and so on in for use in AGD and ATDX. So uh, ZX paintbrush is quite a comprehensive package there are a lot of different options and of course you can use it for creating loading screens and drawing and so on but today I'm just going to focus on the very basic tools that I use in order to create sprites. So the first thing you can do here is you can choose control and with the mouse wheel you can zoom in and out of your screen or you can change the zoom over here. Now this button down here, this icon here, that's the freehand tool. This is the one you're going to use the most. You can use that for drawing uh, whatever you like here and you can use the uh, left button to draw and use the right button like this to erase just like that so that's pretty straightforward now the next thing that I like to use is this one here this turns the attributes on and off and that allows you to see a 16 by 16 grid like this so if you're drawing a sprite in the 16 by 16 area like so then you'll know that you're in the right space here now the next thing to look at here is the grab tool this one is a selector tool and this one is custom size pixel by pixel you can use that but more often than I will use this one which is an attribute compatible and it is 8 by 8 and so you, you can only draw on lines and that's going to make it really easy for moving stuff around so normally I, I use keyboard shortcuts you can use copy from here but you can use control C and control V that will make a copy and you can drag it like that it will always paste it back to it, to its position where it's where you copied it from so that's that and then you can also use control X and that will paste just like that and you can move it around in the same principle so that's basically how you control that and I'm just pressing control Z there which is undo and you can rewind about 10 steps I think so you can press control Z quite a few times there okay so that is that now before we move on to color what's important here is to take a look at this and this as you can see here I've got here toggle drawing pixels and while you're drawing this needs to be switched on because while while you're drawing here I'll select the draw tool you can see there you can draw with the pixels but this one turns it off and that's important because sometimes when you're working you're actually going to work only with the attributes because the spectrum has attributes and pixels separately sometimes you only want to do color other times you want to do pixels only other times you want to do both uh, and that's really the key to the flexibility of ZX paintbrush and how it works here uh, once you understand that you should find that the package is really very flexible so I'll show you an example of that now so let's say for example we'll turn the colors back on here and as you can see at the moment I've got it set with the black ink and no paper so these are this is the ink setting here and this is the paper here so I'm drawing now only with the ink and so if I draw a line uh, once I've enabled the pixels right there you go and that's going to draw a black line and if I do one here it's going to draw a red line just like that okay now you'll notice I've got no paper setting only ink so if I draw the, the red line over here you'll see of course that there where the clash is where the clash happens here the red is going to take over from the um, black just like that as you would expect on a spectrum and that's exactly how that works now let's now change it and um, I'm going to put this to I'm going to switch that off switch the ink off and I'm going to switch paper on here and I'm going to now draw on here and I'll turn that off turn the pixels off and as you can see if I just go over this it's, it's going to just yellow paper or if I want to do with p pink there you see it will do that now if I want to change the paper let's say to cyan like this now I haven't ink selected so I won't select an ink and now it will draw only the paper which is really handy of course um, if I want to draw the ink green then of course I can add it like that 
And remember, I've got this switched off, so I'm only doing painting over the top there with the colors. So that's how you kind of manage with that. So if I switch this on, that now you can see I've got a green ink, and I can draw the green ink there, like that. And it's also on cyan paper. Now, if I leave the cyan paper on, of course, it's going to draw there, and it's going to start drawing like that. But if I turn the cyan paper off, you'll see now the green ink goes and it draws only over the top. So um, that's how you switch on and off the ink or the paper that you're using. And if you just want to draw, now if I just want to draw pixels on here without affecting any paint at all, then I can easily do that by not choosing any ink or any paper. And that is selected. And so now if I draw, it will be red here, but it will be green when it goes to here and it'll be black when it goes to here because it's only drawing pixels. So that's basically how that part works. Okay, so I've made quite a mess up there, haven't I? So I'll just highlight this and press delete and that will clear it away, just like that. So when you're working, you need to just bear in mind what you're doing here because if you just want to draw, for example, if you just want to do something in AGD, if you press Control A, that will highlight the whole thing we'll choose um, paper here black and we'll choose uh, white or gray and we'll just press delete and that will clear the whole screen and that's now set it to that correct um, attribute now the other thing is if I want to I can also use these that if we put that on that will turn on the bright and so if I clear now this will all be bright and that will mean bright is off and if you don't have either of them selected then you won't affect the bright as it is. Uh, let me show you a, a demo of that. Let's say for example we'll just choose bright yellow here. So if I draw here, I'll just draw some thing there and then I'll switch the bright and draw again and you can see there that I'm drawing over that and there's the bright part and there's the dark part there. So I'll switch, switch over, here's some bright. Once it hits that attribute that's going to turn to that color. So that's how the bright switches on and off on each square. If I don't have either of those set, then the bright is not going to be affected at all. So it'll stay bright here and here. And even if I change the color here, if I now, and let's say I switch off the, the pixels, if I paint here, then it will paint it to this cyan, but this will stay dark and this will be bright, as you can see like that, you see? So you're not affecting the brightness. You only affect it if you've got these switched off. You probably have figured out that these two here do exactly the same thing, but that's for flash. So if I hit the flash there like that, then, or if I want to, that won't affect the flash, but I need to switch it here, turn that flash off there, and that's how that works. So, uh, yeah, right. So that's the a few, just a few of the basic principles. And um, again, while you're drawing, let's say, for example, if I want to draw sprite here I've got this switched off and um, if I want to I can just kind of zoom in a little bit like this and I'm not going to draw a particularly interesting character but let's just say we draw a little man like this and there he is he's like running like that and like that right there you go simple enough and um, okay so that's how you do that and if you then switch it off here you can see what it looks like in color I've set it at blue so now I want to change it and I want to put it on bright like this I'll switch and toggle off the pixels so that I'm only dealing in color and I can draw that like that okay so that's really the basics of drawing with um, Xenix paintbrush you've got the pixel drawer down here there are other options you know you've got fills and various things which are obviously a lot more useful when it comes to um, creating full screens. But when it comes to sprites, normally you're, you're probably going to be fine just with this freehand tool. Just remember, switch it on and off from here, like this. And then when you're dealing with color, just choose the inks here. Switch them all off if you don't want to do any color. If you want to affect the ink, then you do that. Now, obviously, I've got pixels switched on, so I'll undo that, switch the pixel off and uh, now I can just change the color. So you're working um, with color or not color depending on exactly what you want to do. It's a little bit fiddly but generally it 
works a way around quite nicely because of that and again paper here if I want to affect the paper I'll highlight the paper there and it is off and there you go and again I can change the paper just like that so generally while you're working you'll find yourself switching these on and off and switching this on and off as well I'm not sure if there's a shortcut key for that probably would be pretty handy if there was but that's the basic principle now um, I have made another video showing how to export so we'll uh, I'll, I'll put a link in the description about that okay so let's switch over now as you can see here's another example this is from a game I wrote a few years ago called Terrapin some of you may have played it and as you can see here um, I've got a blue background but it doesn't really matter for AGD whatever the background is um, but there are the sprites I just wanted to show you how to um, get what you've drawn if you've drawn sprites like this in um, in ZX paintbrush and then you want to import them into AGD I'm going to show you the simplest way of doing it now there is a way that you can easily save binary data off and uh, I've made a video about that but uh, to be honest the simplest way really is to save it off as a screen and then just use the grab options within AGD itself to um, to do that so all you need to do then is to save this off as a tap sorry I beg your pardon I mean to say a bin a bin is going to be a lot easier so we save it off as a bin I'll show you how to do that now so basically you just go here and choose file save as and you can see here that um, I've got the option uh, I've already saved a couple of screens but save it as an SCR here there are lots of other choices but this is the simplest one just save it as an SCR now if you're using Spectaculator and you want to import a binary then you're gonna have to change the name of this to um, BIN and um, so just rename it after you've created it basically but we'll save that off there let's just use that for argument's sake and then we'll switch over to uh, AGDX and have a look at how that works okay so here we are in AGDX this is version NA not released yet at the time of recording anyway but um, the principles are the same so this is how you can basically load your file in you go to the sprites and then you press S and that takes you to this uh, worksheet now if you press S again normally this is going to load your sprites in and uh, you can basically use that to uh, to look at all the sprites you've made but of course there aren't any sprites here at the moment so I'm gonna load a binary file in now you can load it direct to screen but uh, the best way to do this is to go to load binary data and you can see here I'm just going to choose TerraPrint sprites sorry it's off screen but uh, it's basically there and it's 6912 you can see here TerraPrint sprites and I load it in at 49152 the reason for that is we're working on a 128k machine and one of the banks is open here ready for this screen to be loaded in and once that's loaded in you just have to press R to refresh it and there you'll see that it has basically loaded the screen in that we were working on and then all you need to do to take any th anything from this screen that you want you just have to press M to copy and then you just press K to paste like that just like that and it will paste the color as well I can make another frame just press S again M to copy second frame just like that and a third frame just like that S M and K and one more frame S and K just like that and as you can see we've got our animated terrapin there and I think I just need to check the frames I think actually I might have two copies there of the same frame but anyway it doesn't matter you get the idea don't you so that's how you do it you go to the screen you load the binary uh, to 49152 you press refresh and uh, there it is and you're done so yeah that's basically how you use the basics of ZX paintbrush you don't need to 
um, be an expert. You just need to know a few tricks there um, to uh, to get it working quite nicely. And I find that, uh, especially for working, if you want to create uh, slightly larger sprites, for example, where you're using two sprites together or something like that, it's very handy. Okay, so I think that's it for today. Hope you found that useful. Um, I'll be away for another week or so now, but uh, hopefully I'll be back again with another video soon. And in the meantime, happy drawing and happy coding. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.